Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I've, I've never been much of a reader. In fact, I'm, I'm not a reader at all. I don't like reading things, except things I, you know, that are important, like Honey and Fishing magazines and things like that. <laughs> but I got hooked uh, years ago on the Frank Peretti novels, and I don't know if any of you have ever read them. The first one's called This Breath of Darkness, and then there's a whole series of novels after that. I read them all cover to cover. These series I remember reading. Frank Brady's a Christian author. He wrote Christian fiction, and it's fiction. But what he does in his books is he describes what goes on that you don't see in the Christian realm. And this first song is like that this morning. So can you feel that when we get together, if we all come together as one voice in unity, singing about Jesus Christ, there are things going on. In, in, in the, the down places that are not good. They don't like it. Mountains start to tremble. And the more we come together as Christians, the harder it is for Satan and his followers to fight against us. And that's what the song is about. Open up the heavenly gates. Prepare the way for the risen Lord. Let's stand this morning and do that together.
January 25th, which is tomorrow, we know. God bless you all, Mark and Nancy Fry. And so um, they got through it, and uh, as far as we know, at this particular point in time, they're doing real well. Uh, also in there is a reminder of Trinity's prayer list procedure, because they do have, I don't, know, I don't call them rules, but you know, certain guidelines that we follow. If you have a, a, a prayer uh, that you want to put on the list, you either call Nancy Murray or you can call Nancy Fry or call me, and then uh, we get it on there, and then it stays on for X number of days. I'll encourage all of you that if you know that you have put a loved one on the prayer chain, uh, follow up. Give us some updates. How are they doing? What's new? Is there something different that we need to be praying for? That should be an active and ongoing kind of thing. And so if you have somebody that you would like to put on there, make sure that you keep us posted because we know that indeed God is answering prayer every day. Amen? And it is a wonderful thrill and it's so encouraging to see that. So when he has blessed you, then make sure that you've left others with that news. Okay? Uh, any other announcements that I may be missing out on? No? We're good to go. Okay. Uh, let's take a look, flip your sheet over, and we'll take a look at the uh, prayer list. I had some additions on there for you. Um, I mean, updates. Uh, focused uh, Mary Ellen Smith's son, Kenny, as uh, a lot of you may know him. He passed away, and so be in prayer for Mary Ellen Smith and family. Um, Cheryl Courtney Schneider fell in her apartment on Tuesday. Uh, her apartment's right across the street, and uh, they took her to the hospital. And she's had, she wasn't found until Wednesday, and so they took her to the hospital. And she's had some ongoing complications uh, that are going on, and so you need to be in prayer. Nancy um, Courtney, her sister, uh, was here asking for prayers for guidance as to how she can help Cheryl. Uh, and it's kind of a nip and tuck kind of thing because she's got low, low blood pressure and uh, she's uh, problems that go along with that, some diabetic and uh, several things. And so it is very serious. So please be in prayer for both of those sisters who have been in this church since they were just puppies. Uh, they have been around for the, a long, long time. And so be in prayer for both of them. Prayers for Barb Tate, who is Ruth Adlon's sister. As you know, she had had a mini stroke with complications, but she's uh, in skilled nursing home and she's kind of going downhill. And so you need to be in prayer for Ruth and her sister Barb because uh, Barb has many other complications that have set in and we need to be in prayer for them. Uh, Joey Wilk, uh, who was the young man who survived that horrible car crash, uh, from what we understand, he's doing much better. He's up and walking and taking therapy. And so that, those are good things to hear. Um, Brad, who was 32, Pat Weaver's neighbor, and Stephanie, 18 years old, hospitalized. Uh, Pat, uh, they're both going through numerous complications. Um, and so be in prayer for them. And also prayers for Bill and Mary White. Uh, Mary White is in um, the gardens of Blue Ridge, and uh, she has some difficulties falling and so forth. And uh, she believes she wants to come home, uh, but the doctors and nurses and all the professionals are saying, no, you can't. And that creates difficulty. And, and so Bill's on his own in his house. So he's in charge of keeping it clean and cooking and all of those kinds of things. And so be in prayer for Bill as well. Because all of those chores that we kind of think as normal are that much more difficult for both Bill and for Mary. So be in prayer for them. Um, who else do we have? Oh, we want to pray for my father-in-law, John Kepler. As you know, just before the COVID shut, the last shutdown happened, he was supposed to go in. He had gotten six stents. He was, the final stage was to go in and get a heart valve replacement. And on the day he was scheduled, they canceled it because of COVID. Now they've opened things back up. I've got to take him for testing on Tuesday to make sure that he's COVID-free and so forth. And then the operation, if everything goes well, the operation will probably be Thursday morning, we think, but we know we're not sure. We have not heard the time. So be in prayer for John and for family. Uh, Danny's going to be away, so be in prayer for her as well. So, um, you know, pick up the phone, get the call. Anybody have anything else that we've missed? Yes, sir. Can I ask for some more prayer for my brother? And 
my brothers in various areas of religion. We all do. Was he in the hospital? Well, he came home on Wednesday, but he's very much incapacitated. He's still bedridden. He's still wrestling up. And he has no money in his garage. Amen. We will pray for Bob's brother. What else do we have? Always lots of reasons for us to be in prayer. Look around you. Look at the our uh, the situation in our country. We just got through the election and the inauguration and so forth. And there's still problems that are coming from that on both sides and so forth. And uh, problems in the world with COVID. Problems with different strains of COVID coming out and about and so forth. And so there's many, many reasons for all of us to be in prayer. Let's start now but continue even after we leave. Let's pray. Father, indeed, we thank you for speaking to us. You speak to us in so many ways, Lord. You show us answers to our prayers when we least expect them. So we thank you for being the God who answers prayers. All that we have and all that we are, we owe to you and your constant care for your people. Scripture tells us that if we would repent and change our ways and call out to you, you will heal our land. So we find ourselves in a time where our land desperately needs you, Lord. We need to be healed. Anger, strife, misunderstanding, division seem to be the rule instead of an exception. Part of this pandemic, which has affected all of us, adds to that fear and to that division. The election which our country has just completed threatens to do the same. Even you alone, Father, can heal us, and we earnestly request that you do so. Even though we confess that our attention, and our attention has not always been focused on you, Lord, our hearts still ache for your comfort. Above all else, remind us that you are the very definition of steadfast love, and you're always with us. We list names each week of those who are suffering for so many reasons, and we do ask you to heal them if it be thy will. If there's any comfort that we could grant them, however, as your representatives here on this earth, make us bold enough to go forth and do so. Give them the comfort that you, in fact, have given all of us. Father, we have you in our hearts, so let us all therefore keep them in our hearts as well. Assure us that only the kingdom matters, and that's your kingdom. And that we're supposed to be ever vigilant, ever serving and sacrificing our own comfort for the comfort of others and the common good of your cause and your purpose. Father, we long to serve you until such time as you are ordained to call us home, to be with you in paradise for eternity. So we pray this and more in the blessed name of your son Jesus, who died that we might have life and have it in abundance. Amen. Our scripture focus for today, I hope, is a familiar story, and we're going to revisit it with the idea that it's a very current theme for us. Uh, we're going to 1 Samuel, chapters 1 through 10. I know you probably haven't read this for a while. If you want to, you can open your few Bibles to page 264. And this is the Lord calling Samuel, but as we read it, we understand that this is the Lord calling us as well. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. 
Samuel went up, or got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you call me. My son Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. And so Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling, as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant has been listening. Let's pray. Father, we just heard your word. We've heard the story before, Lord, but we feel that it may have something to do with you calling us the same way. So, Father, I ask that you open our hearts to the truth of this passage for us. Have us open our minds to imagine what that indeed is like. Have we heard your voice? And what have we done about it? Father, have us reach us, reach into our hearts and understand that there is yet so much for us to do, so much we can do, if only we would listen and give ourselves over to your voice. We pray this. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, this is one of those passages where you can put yourself in that position. When and how have you heard the Lord speaking to you? He speaks to us in many ways. First of all, open His Word, and you understand. A universal fact that simply says the Bible is the only book that reads you while you're reading it. The Bible searches your thoughts, it searches your soul, your feeling, your inclinations, your stubbornness, and your willingness. Just like it did with Samuel. The Lord's Word reaches us in so many ways from so many corners of this earth. The Lord may send a messenger from this side of the church to talk to a person from that side of the church and give them something that only they can understand so they will know in their heart by the Holy Spirit that that's the Word of God. And that's pretty amazing because that can change your life forever. You heard him say, now therefore go and make disciples. But Jesus started that sentence by saying, all authority on heaven and the earth has been given to me. Now therefore go. And so what was established a long time ago for all of us is this voice. This ever-present voice that nudges and calls and pokes and prods. And in Samuel's case, it calls you three or four times before you wake up and listen. I know that for a fact. I'm not a great listener when it comes to that. I've got maybe too many things on my mind, or I'm not interested in what somebody has to say, or I'm preoccupied with my own problems or whatever. I will confess that to you with the idea that I know we are all in the same boat. There's times when we're not listening. But the one that we're always supposed to be listening to, the one that we're supposed to be ready to listen for, is God himself in the many ways that he presents information. Beginning of each year is always a good time for us to try to take stock and, and who we are and how we've been and what we would like to be differently about it. And uh, this thing should be on everybody's list. Have you listened for God? And if so, how does that work? 
not listening many times means that you're going to miss something important, and that's the case with God. Samuel was a good example for us to follow. He thought he heard Eli talking to him, and in fact, it was God. Others in our lives do have a need to be heard and understood, and so are we listening for them? Oh, that for terminology. Ouch. Because we know that we do. Maybe instead of asking you, I would ask your spouse or your children or your parents, are you supposed to take into consideration the needs of the speakers all the time? Are you supposed to have a listening heart that hears and interprets? Not just automatically answers, but digests what you hear. How's that working for you? Well, if you're like me, you need a lot of improvement. I've got to tell you that. Just because I'm a pastor, and as such, I'm supposed to be a good listener, I can tell you flat out, I'm not some of that. I'm just not. There's always room for improvement. Just ask my family. It's not done out of spite, it's not done out of meanness, I think it's just done out of a whole lot of reasons that still don't add up to a good excuse. The idea is we are supposed to be available. See, that's what Samuel was, he was available. I don't know about you, but when somebody wakes me up in the middle of the night, I get grumpy. <laughs> Maybe just you and me, Mike, I don't know, but hey! When you think about it, if I was Samuel, if I was woke up two or three different times, I would say, stop it. Leave me alone. I'm trying to get my beauty rest, and as you can see, it's about working. Think about it. How do you feel when somebody is trying to tell you something? Your mind can still be going the whole time they're talking, and you can be totally missing whatever it is they're saying. And then a few minutes later, did, did you remember what I told you? And I gotta say, mm, no, not really. Would you mind telling me again? Wow. I try to think for every time I said that. There's certainly some people we know that are better listeners than others, and God bless them. That's a wonderful talent. God calls all of us Christians to be good listeners. I gotta tell you that. And to be a good listener, you can also be a good reader because every time we open God's Word, we are listening to the Word of God. We're listening for His specific call on our lives. It's interesting. When somebody comes to you and says, you know, Pastor, are you, are you sure that, that God is a healing God? Do you think he'll heal me? Well, the first thing that I do, other than saying, well, absolutely, is to refer them to places in the Bible where paragraph after paragraph, sentence after sentence, reassures us that indeed that is the God that we worship. But we need to listen. The other thing that we can do is when somebody's trying to tell us something, we're desperately trying to tell them something, and we start talking over each other. Have you ever been so exasperated with somebody that you just burst out and say, would you just be quiet for a minute so I can speak? We do that. We kind of run over each other. Husbands and wives, friends, whatever. People tend to do that. I'm so excited. I have to tell you what just happened to me. Yeah, I know, but wait a minute, because this is important. You kind of go back and forth. And so good listening takes practice. You'll never be perfect. Sorry. Wait a minute. If you're perfect, raise your hand because then we can go listen to you. Oh, good. My job is safe. So think about it. You're not going to be perfect. It's a lifetime of practice. It's a lifetime of discipline. Uh, as you get older, you can get hard of hearing and you got to have people repeat themselves. Hey, there's all sorts of times that you can still be listening. Discipline. 
constant reminders to keep on track. It's one of those talents that you have to keep working and dredging up better ways to be better. Those of you who are in the business world, like maybe uh, uh, you know, teachers and, and, and nonprofit agencies and so forth, you get seminars. You get information in the mail. We've got a new seminar coming up for how to listen better, right? Yeah. I get them on the internet. Do we take advantage of that? See, there wasn't a whole lot of listening going on in Samuel's day. There wasn't a whole lot of talking going on in Samuel's day. He was living in the central part of Israel, in a city called Shiloh. They lived with an elderly man named Eli. He was preacher, priest, priest in charge of the tabernacle, and he was there to teach young people in the way. Samuel was being trained to be an assistant of Eli. <coughs> so I think he, would, he needed to know. But most of all, he needed to know how to tune into the Word of God because you can't serve God if you're not tuning into his word. Oh, you can go do good things. You can make sandwiches in the chow line and all those other kinds of things. But are you doing it for God? There's the question. So the passage begins with three ominous words. In those days, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Kind of a dark time. Nowadays, we feel and hear and see the presence of God. I think God right now is busier than I've ever seen because there's a lot of things going on in this world. And at this point, only first the first five books of the Bible had even been written. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, along with Joshua and Judges. That was it. We have a whole lot more than that, so we can be busy listening to scripture day after day. In addition to this, one of the primary ways that God spoke to his people was through visions. Speaking to the prophets. Giving them a vision that they needed to share. He was setting Samuel up to be a prophet. Because you can better believe that once Samuel heard this word of God and was called in that way, he probably went about preaching saying, folks, Sleep lightly, because you never know when God is going to want to talk to you. Listen and be focused. Does that sound familiar? Oh, absolutely. When you have a pressing prayer need and you are on your knees in prayer to God, one of the things that you must do is listen and look for an answer. It may come as you least expect it. Think about Mary, think about Joseph, the story that we went through. Neither one of them ever thought that God would answer their prayers in that way. And that's another one of our problems. When we ask for help from God, we tend to put him in a box. We say, look, this is the answer to the prayer that I want. Well, maybe God's over here with something that you can't even imagine. He says, just be open. Be open to listening and hearing possibilities. God knows much more than we do. He has a plan for our lives. It's a plan to prosper us and not to harm us. And we don't know what it is. And so therefore, why wouldn't we be open in our listening skills? The term boy for Samuel indicates that he was beyond the age of a young child, but he was not yet an adult, and so he was in that perfect age for training. People suggest that he was about 13, which was the same age that Jesus was when he went into the, to the synagogue and taught the elders from Scripture, which was huge. And so there was a, it was at one of those ages where God says, hey, you're on the threshold. I need to arm you with some information. And so it goes for all of us as we get older. We are on many thresholds. I'm 64. I'm on a threshold right there. 
That doesn't mean that God has stopped talking to me. He is going to be talking to me in a different way, in a different focus. So if I don't, if I'm not resolved to listen, how in the world am I ever going to get the message? Oh, I can be like Gideon. I can be like Gideon and feel that God's talking to me and then test him three times by throwing the fleece out with with a request that he do certain things with it. Sure, I could be that way. But if I'm godly, if I am focused and I believe in Lord Jesus Christ as my guide for life, then I should be different in how I'm tuned in to listening. It would be just as bad as saying, okay, now that I've got a wonderful wife, I don't have to listen to her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> See how that works out for you. <laughs> okay, I say, how's that working for you? We've got a wonderful God. He speaks to us. He has good will for us. Why aren't we listening? Do you notice what Samuel called himself? He said, speak, for your servant is listening. Are we okay with being someone's servant? We should be. We should be. Because as Christians, we're supposed to live for and serve one another. I didn't say subservient. I said serve one another. Is there anything I can do to help you? I understand that you're having difficult. What could I do for you? Please call me if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any need. We say this. Now, if we're not sincere about this, like Samuel was, speak for your servant is listening, then why do we even say things like that? Why would we do that? That would be like one of those Holiday Inn Express commercials. When the person walks into an operating room, and he's the patient, and he lays down. So when the doctor walks in the room, and he says, so, so how many of these operations have you performed, doctor? And the man responds, oh, I've never done this before. I'm not really even a doctor. But don't worry, I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. That would be the insincerity of us talking to God. Yeah, God, I need you. Yeah, God, I'd love for you to answer my questions. But no, I haven't read the Bible. No, I haven't prayed. And by the way, I'm a little busy. Could you get this finished quickly so I can get back to work? Many people approach God like that. God, I've got a list. I'll just leave it on your desk and talk to you later. That's not being a good listener. That's not tuning into God's will for your life. You will miss answers to prayer if you don't read scripture. I'm telling you that. I've had times of confusion and, and just downright heartache. And God shows me a passage that just calms my waters and it's beautiful. If we dare call ourselves believers, we must, absolutely must, listen to God, in whom we say that our Belief and trust is placed, right? If you don't believe me, pull out some money and take a look at what it says. This is so insincere of all of us because we have it in our pockets all the time. And it says, in God we trust. If you don't trust in God to heal, if you don't trust in God to answer prayer, if you don't trust in God to be there, then give away all your money. If you don't believe what it says, think about it. Except this is a fact. God has good things in store for all of us. We've seen God the Father raise his son back to life, declaring victory over death. In fact, God even tells us how the story will end. Spoiler alert, the Lord wins. That's the God who knows you personally. And that's uncomfortable for some folks, including me, because 
knows all the nooks and the crannies and the failings and that seems he seems to be okay with that. And that's a good thing. He came to you in the Lord's Supper and said, I want you to know that I love you and that I have forgiven you. Take and eat, take and drink. That's what he's telling you. Come to my table and I will refresh you. This God knows us and he knows exactly what he's Qualifications have not diminished over time. And hopefully over time we've got to know him even better. The fact that God continues to reach out to people speaking to us through his word, even through though people have repeatedly turned a deaf ear to him, he will still show us his patience, mercy, and love. And in my worst days when I'm stubborn and not listening, I thank God for God. And I think you should as well. He knows you. He knows what he's doing. And we need to resolve anew every year to get closer to him by listening to him, listening for him. Amen? Father, need forgive us. There have been times when we are not good listeners. We say we pay attention, but it's only because there's one little snippet that we need to hear from you, and when we hear it, we move on and go back to our non-listening, non-caring ways. Father, you would need a blessing to all of us, and so we just ask you, Lord, to let this day and every day and this story from scripture be a reminder to us that, that uh, we're not there yet. But we're on the road. We're trying to get to you, Lord. We're trying to be with you in relationship with you. Remind us of the, of the responsibility by the prayer that you gave us. We can hear it in these words. When we look to you and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> While I was listening to Pastor Keith's sermon, I uh, rewrote in my mind 40 times how I was going to introduce this song. <laughs> the first thing about this song is this is a song about me. This is a song that says, Jesus loves me. And uh, as we sing this song together, the song becomes about you. It's your song to God. Thanking Jesus for the fact that he loves you. And um, it seems sometimes that we don't listen very well. And um, when we don't listen very well, sometimes we run away and hide. Where uh, we think that he can't see us. But the song says, I couldn't run, I couldn't run from his presence. I couldn't run from his arms. The song is, Jesus loves me. I was lost, I was in chains, the world had a hold of me, my heart was a stone, it was covered in shame, when he came for me, I couldn't run, couldn't run from his presence. I couldn't run, couldn't run from his arms. Jesus, he loves me, he loves me, he's for me. Jesus, how can it be? He loves me. Bye. 